We said what? We said 10 Kit Kat. 10 Kit Kat. In a beaker containing 40 candies. Kit Kat in a beaker that contains 40 candies. So 10 out of 40 is the same thing as 1 out of 4. If you multiply that by 100%, you get the percentage. One, what's 1 quarter as a percent? 25%. So it's 25% Kit Kat. So we're going to look at percent composition for actual compounds. Combustion analysis, unknown organic compounds. An organic compound contains carbon, hydrogen. All organic compounds contain carbon and oxygen, sometimes oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur. But an organic compound basically is carbon and hydrogen. So it says that during, um, during combustion analysis, the sample is burned in an excess of oxygen so that all the carbon in our compound gets converted to carbon dioxide. At the same time, all the hydrogen is converted to water. Okay, All the hydrogen in our compound gets converted to water. We collect it it's separated and then massed. Another instrument called a mass spec can actually tell us the molar mass of our whole compound. She's okay. So if we figure out the amounts of carbon dioxide and water that are produced, we can figure out the percent carbon and hydrogen in the compound. Percent composition of a compound is the proportion of each element in the compound by mass. So I've got a compound here, compound containing carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And it's got X atoms of carbon, Y atoms of hydrogen, and Z atoms of oxygen. So when you're a scientist, you have to run samples three times. That way, if you get close numbers, you're okay. So we run trials in threes. So three samples. So we know the total mass of the compound and individually the mass of carbon, the mass of hydrogen, and the mass of oxygen. So to figure out the pers you would take the gram of the element over the gram of the total sample and you would multiply it by a hundred percent to figure out the gra the percent oxygen you would do grams of oxygen over grams of your sample okay so we've got three samples there how much how much carbon was in sample one yeah, 0 0.801 grams. What was the grams of our sample? It was 2 grams. Multiply it by 100%, and that tells you the percent carbon. Okay? So, which ones are different? Is, is, carbon, is carbon significantly different? No. They're all 40%. That should be a zero. Okay, those are zeros. What about the hydrogens? They're all the same. What about the oxygens? They're all the same. Should they be the same? It's the same sample. It's the same compound. Well, I mean, there's error. There's error here. That could just be rounding. But should they be the same? They should be the same because it's the same sample. It's just we started with a different amount, right? So the, the, the masses, the 2 grams, the 4 grams, the 6, change, but so did the mass of the element. So this one's carbon, right? It changed. 
So you should get the same percent if it's the same compound. So I think we can safely say this compound is 40% carbon, 8% hydrogen, and about 52% oxygen with respect to masses, okay? Per percent by mass, you've got to have the same units. The units will cancel. So if you have milligrams and grams, you have to change them both to the same unit. You can either put them both as milligrams or both as grams, okay? All right, so question number one. We've got a 500 milligram tablet of aspirin. Contains 300 milligrams of carbon, 8.08 .08 milligrams of hydrogen, and the remaining mass is oxygen. How are we going to figure out the mass of oxygen? Kayla? Yeah, so 500, 500 minus 300 and 8 milligrams is the mass of oxygen. So what you get? 191.92 milligrams of oxygen. Okay, so the whole tablet of aspirin is 500 milligrams. So our units, milligrams, are going to cancel for all of them. Take that value times it by 100% and that gives you the percent carbon, the percent hydrogen, and the percent oxygen. So 60, because there's five sig figs, we've got to keep five sig figs. So there's 60% carbon, Nam? 1.616. 4, 1.616, so 1.62% hydrogen, 3 sig figs, and oxygen, Kaylin? 38.384, so 38.38%. What should these numbers add up to? Oh, wait. 38.38 what? Four. Four. Thanks. Good. What should these numbers add up to? A hundred. A total thing is a hundred percent. So these numbers should all add up to a hundred percent. So 1.62 plus 38.384 is approximately 40 plus 60 is a hundred. You might get a little bit over or a little bit under 100, but they should add up ballpark 100. Nice. If it's asking for percent composition, we want the percent nitrogen, and we want the percent oxygen. So right now, we can figure out percent nitrogen. That would be 1.40 divided by 4.60 times 100%. 30.4%. Now we've got to figure out uh, percent oxygen. So there's two ways we can do it. We can say 4.6 minus 1.4 gives us the mass of oxygen.
and then divide that by the total, multiply it by 100%. How many other elements are in this compound? There's only two. So if we calculated one of them, how do you find the second one? Caleb? Yeah, you can sub subtract that percent from 100. So the percent oxygen would be whatever's left. So it would be 69.6%. Right? 69.6%. It's approximately 30 and approximately 70%. how we figure it out if we know masses, okay? This is how you do it for masses. Sometimes we don't know the mass. Sometimes we don't know the mass, but we know a chemical formula. So the next example is for calcium hydroxide. If I say calculate the percent composition for this one, What masses do we know for calcium? We know molar masses, so you can find the percent composition based on molar masses. So calcium has a molar mass of 40.08 grams per mole. How many oxygens are in this compound? Two. Two oxygens. So 16 times 2 is 32. How many hydrogens? Two hydrogens, so 2.02 .02 grams per mole. If you add all of these numbers up, you're going to get the molar mass of the entire compound. So you've been doing this. So the molar mass of your compound would be, total mass is 74.10. So to figure out the percent calcium, we'll take the molar mass of calcium, divide it by the molar mass of the whole thing, times 100%. Oxygen, oxygen would be 32 grams per mole, divided by 74.10, times 100%. So you take the molar mass that is that element, divide it by the total molar mass of the entire compound, and multiply it by 100%. So the percent hydrogen will be the lowest because it's the least amount of mass. percent composition. So the next question, Nem said the molar mass for the entire compound is 142.05 grams per mole. Did anybody do it for the second one yet? Thanks, Nem. So there's the molar masses for your compounds. Now figure out the percent. 2 times 22.99, and I divide that by the whole thing. How did I get the 142? I added up two sodiums, one sulfur, and four oxygens. So two sodiums is 2 times 22.99. One sulfur is 32.06. Four oxygens is 64. Add those up and we've got 142.05. Okay? So it's like you calculated molar masses, just like before. Nitrogen, so 2 times 14.01 divided by the mass of the whole compound times 100%. So what'd you get for that one, Caleb? 35.00. Nem, what'd you get? Same thing. Oops, shouldn't be. There's no units. Percent. There we go.
okay? So that's your homework.